Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued today Edict 10 of 2019 on allowing foreign capital companies to practice oil and gas drilling activities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Under the Commercial Companies Law issued in accordance with Decree Bylaw 21 of 2001, the foreign capital companies are allowed to own 100% of the oil and gas drilling activities, providing that the parent company have signed or in the process of sealing an agreement on the exploration and production of oil and gas with the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism shall implement this edict. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa departed the Kingdom of Bahrain today on a private visit abroad. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Dubaibiya Palace. On the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, the cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Bahraini citizens and residents, the Arab and Islamic nations, wishing them many happy returns. After the session, the Cabinet Secretary General, Dr. Yasser al-Nasr, made the following statement. The Cabinet hailed the success of the Emergency Gulf and Arab Summit and the 14th Islamic Summit, where His Majesty the King headed the Bahraini delegation. It also hailed the speeches of His Majesty that support Gulf, Arab and Islamic solidarity and reinforce efforts to maintain security and stability in the region, confront subversive regimes and terrorism, as well as affirm the right of Palestinians to establish their own independent and sovereign state on the borders of June 4, 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital and reach a comprehensive solution to the Palestinian issue in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative. The meeting praised the leading role of the custodian of the two holy mosques by calling to hold the summits in order to address the challenges facing the region and maintain the security and stability. The cabinet welcomed the final statements issued by the summits, especially the Gulf and Arab summits, which affirmed the strength, cohesion and unity of GCC in the face of challenges. The cabinet expressed its total condemnation of Qatar's position and its violation of the agreements made during the Gulf and Arab summits, stressing that those who back down, back down from supporting such outcomes presents the world with its links to agendas that contradict the Gulf and Arab summits' objectives of maintaining Gulf, Arab and Islamic security and its condemnation of interference in its internal affairs or targeting its security and stability. The cabinet also expressed dissatisfaction with how a member state of the GCC and the League of Arab States withdraws its support to the Gulf and Arab entity and its security and stability. In this regard, the Minister of Foreign Affairs submitted a report containing the most important decisions and results of those summits. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince then congratulated the students who passed their secondary and intermediate exams, wishing them further success. On the occasion of World Environment Day, His Royal Highness stressed the government's keenness to implement programs that preserve the environment, combat air pollution and its effects and support to the international community and its efforts to preserve the global environment. The cabinet discussed the enactment of legislation enabling the gradual introduction of disciplinary sanctions in the laws governing professions such as law, medicine, engineering and pharmacy to ensure further justice in the imposition of disciplinary sanctions and penal sanctions commensurate with violations of those who practice them. The cabinet referred a draft law to the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on amending a number of provisions of the law of practicing law, the organization of practicing engineering professions, decrees by law on practicing medicine and non doctor doctors and pharmacists practicing medical professions and the organization of the pharmacy profession and pharmaceutical centers. The cabinet approved a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Education and the King Abdul Aziz and his companions Foundation for Giftedness and Creativity in cooperation with the two sides in the field of discovering and sponsoring talented students in various fields and exchanging experiences between the two parties in the field of talent and creativity. In the framework of the necessary preparations to provide the best mobile services, the cabinet approved the mechanism and conditions for the allocation of cap capacities and frequencies in different brands, including the band 800 to 2600 megahertz and 3400 to 3700 megahertz in order to provide the best services. The cabinet also held the inauguration of the national campaign for the early detection of collateral cancer in the kingdom which will be implemented by King Hamid Hospital in cooperation with the Ministry of Health and under the supervision of the Supreme Council of Health. The cabinet discussed posting advertisements on some government buildings, facilities and sports fields.
the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's participation in the emergency summits for the leaders of the GCC countries, the Arab leaders, and the 14th session of the Islamic Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation upon the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, reflects a brotherly relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. He noted His Majesty's belief in the importance of the strategic role of the Saudi King in leading the joint action of the Arab and Islamic countries to achieve prosperity avoid risks and achieve aspiration with his wisdom and vision. He also noted Saudi Arabia's regional and international status, its commitment and support of history in all circumstances. The minister added that these summits have achieved their goals and came up with constructive results that reflect the stances of the Arab and Islamic countries. He also noted the Arab and Islamic joint action will overcome the various surrounding challenges and combat all attempts to a foreign interference in domestic affairs that do not respect international conventions or laws and disregard principles of good neighborliness aiming at destabilizing national security and hindering efforts towards further progress and prosperity for people. He said that the participation of Qatar in these summits was very weak, ineffective, and does not suit the importance and the circumstances of the meetings. The minister expressed his surprise at Qatar's reservation on the statement issued by the GCC summit, which stressed the principles included in the joint defense agreement that stipulates that the security of the GCC countries is indivisible. He also affirmed the strength and cohesion of the GCC and the unity among its members, pointing out to the decline of the priority of enhancing GCC relations and Qatar's policy. He noted that Qatar's link with its brothers in the GCC Council has become very weak at a time when Doha is in debt and is seeking med mediators to save it. He underscored that Qatar's failure to respond to the just demands of the GCC countries led to the continuation of the crisis as Doha is not willing to resolve the situation after putting itself in a position against its neighbors and this is not the interest of the brotherly people of Qatar who will remain an integral part of the Gulf society. On the occasion of the end of the 2018 and 2019 school year and within the framework of the ministry's celebration of students' achievements in various fields, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid al naimi honored 90 distinguished students with local, regional and international achievements, including students with special needs. The minister expressed pride in the achievements of the outstanding students, affirming that the ministry will continue to support them in various fields. al naimi noted that in 2018 and 2019, the Gifted Students Care Center has succeeded in implementing 132 academic programs in the fields of academic and performance talents. The students praise the minister's interest in receiving and honoring them personally, which motivates them to achieve further success. The Moon Sighting Committee is meeting this evening, corresponding to the 29th of Ramadan at the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, to receive reports of the Shawwal Moon that will confirm the advent of Eid al-Fitr. The Council issued a statement in which it urged the public to diligently observe the birth of the new crescent moon, the first of Shawwal, 1439 Hijri year, and to immediately report by calling the committee. The Council extended congratulations to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime, the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Royal Family and the people of Bahrain as well as all Muslims around the world. Goodbye Ramadan is one of the unique cultural events in Bahrain where in a delightful atmosphere residents farewell the holy month by roaming the streets and signing, singing cultural songs with traditional drums. More on this report with Habib Abdul Ghaffar. Ramadan has a special place in the hearts of the people of Bahrain. Over the years, on the last few days of Ramadan after Qiyam prayers, in every neighborhood, residents roam the streets every day as a group to sing together cultural and popular songs in the farewell of Ramadan along with the traditional drums. This is traditional like uh, 100 years ago from our parents, parents, our grands, they are doing like this every year every uh, last three days in Ramadan. I really like this event. It's like it's a tradition of our lovely Ramadan and it's like a really good way of saying goodbye to this lovely month and we look forward on having it next year in Ramadan and I really like it that it's happening in our neighborhood and it's really nice and gives out like a lovely part of our lovely neighborhood. This year, we joined Galali residents in their celebration. It has been a tradition over the years that grown-ups and kids still enjoy. I live here in Galali, and you see how we uh, celebrate in uh, 
our uh, month, it's Ramadan, and uh, this is our culture, and we're enjoying that every year, in the last four days in uh, Holy Month, and we're singing uh, some music, traditional music, how we say uh, about Prophet Muhammad. We say goodbye Ramadan with our song. Dalali residents were enjoying the old custom and the songs that embody the good deeds and noble values of Islam, cohesion and love in this holy month. They also included prayers and words of wisdom. <laughs> It's a delightful artistic celebration of Bahrain's old heritage and unique culture in the farewell of this holy month. In the heart of Galali, people are singing their traditional songs in celebration of the farewell of the beautiful month, the holy month of Ramadan. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. Shopping malls are buzzing with shoppers gearing up for Eid, searching for the new clothes, outfits, and the latest fashion trends. More on this report with Haba Abdul Ghaffar. It's this busy, happy time of the year. Everyone is gearing up and preparing for Eid al-Fitr and its festive atmosphere. Shopping malls are buzzing around the clock, with shoppers from all members of the family searching for special new outfits and garments for their gatherings and joyous holidays. We got you the latest fashion trends this Eid with the fashion designer Rana Tabara. So what's in this year for Eid is that it should be something that's still traditional. It holds value to the person who's wearing it, um, especially that's Eid. But it's also comfortable and it's easy to wear. And you can mix and match the top. You can wear it with something else later. You can wear your bisht with your, like another jalabiya that you have at home. This Eid, it's pop colors, the bright colors, the fresh colors, the colors that remind you of flowers and spring. It's coming up. Spring is coming up around the corner. I know we haven't got into summer yet. It's coming. The heat has arrived in Bahrain. But we do really like look forward to the colors in spring, the flowers, um, the beauty of nature. My Eid uh, collection consists of three-piece sets. Um, they're very comfortable, they're very colorful, and they have different textures. So the top and the bottoms are like silky fabrics that are colorful with patterns. And I have the bisht on top, which is a very bright color, and you have the wings motif on the back. So basically my motto is, when life gives you wings, fly and don't let anything stop you. This is your life, you should do as you please and just fly away. So yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And especially for empowering women, letting them be who they want to be. In my fashion, I believe women feel who they want to be and they feel empowered. So that's something I like truly believe in. My whole motto is to start doing something that's East meets West. So basically it's traditional, but still it's modern. So it appeals to all kinds of people. People from the GCC, people from the Mediterranean, people from the US, from Europe. So I like to use motifs like wings and uh, skulls and Frida Kahlo and like lots of cool things that appeal to all different kinds of people. I've uh, started off with the short length and now I've gone to the longer length. Um, I'd like to show you some of my designs over here. I have this bisht I call the Ghutra bisht. Um, a lot of people here, foreigners and Arabs, they like this fabric. So I've used many different combination colors here. The colors I used are sort of like um, inspired by this something like Skittles and candy. So I have fuchsia, I have royal blue, I have lime green, I have uh, bright yellows. So they're all incorporated in different co color combinations. So the top would be like, let's say blue, and the bottom, the pants would be blue with like all the patterns, all the colors that are in the same, the bisht and the top. I think Bahrain is a great, uh, great uh, gateway for all the neighboring countries. Um, we have a lot of, we have a lot of opportunities here because we engage with lots of people coming across overseas as well. Um, not just over from the GCC, we also have a lot of foreigners. A lot of people here live, like let's say from Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and all their ancestors come to visit. So we do have a like quite a bit of like a, how do you say, melting pot here in Bahrain. We love that we have a lot of international kind of people here. So it does help the market a lot. And we really appreciate that. I have a traditional bisht with a really, really colorful fabric on top, which is inspired by nature because of the colors, because of the design, the motif is like a flowers. And um, I just like to incorporate uh, traditional things with, you know, like 
East meets West, as I said before. So this is very Eastern, Middle Eastern and Gulf. And this is Western, the colors and the fabric. You know, it's, I know it's not Western Western, but like the idea of mixing these two things together makes it more Western. With this, everyone can start their Eid holidays with glamour. Eid means sharing, togetherness, happiness, and of course, fashion. We're talking today about the latest trends of fashion for this Eid. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.